Okay, so this ep okay, so this episode is about being really rustic. Uh, what I've I've actually got quite a few logs that I've um, acquired from various places. Um, some of them from where I worked. Some cut up a tree and dumped it there so that's quite handy for me to be honest um, what I've done is I've taken this log that I've had in my garage for quite a while now well seasoned um, split it down in, it's, it's an evergreen by the way it's just I don't know what type could be anything I mean any type various amounts of them um, so what I've done is I've split that down like so I've got the other half on the floor down there um, obviously I've used for, my, for that my hand axe the chisel to split obviously the hammer to hammer the chisel what I've also gone and done is uh, I've ordered this Perspex here, uh, that's just the blue protective stuff, it's actually clear obviously, uh, but that's an A3 piece of Perspex, not very expensive, you can buy that on eBay. Um, so it's it's going to go for an A3 picture, um, so it's going to be quite a nice big frame. Um, so what I'm going to do now with this is I'm going to try ripping that down on my table saw. Uh, hopefully it's going to work because <laughs> it's quite a big chunk so I'm going to have to do it in sections. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to chop both halves down and try and assemble it to be like, uh, like quite a thick, chunky, rustic uh, picture frame. Um, so I suppose let's better get sawing. Because my table saw doesn't have the cutting height to cope with the thickness of the, the log itself, uh, and I don't have a bandsaw, which would be mighty handy. Uh, I have to finish it off with a hand saw, which isn't too bad, I suppose. It doesn't take too long. Because of curves, it's starting to pop up. Um, so what I've done is I've just weighed it down with some um, stuff. Okay, so now that we have the uh, frame all glued up, we need to go ahead and cut the rabbit for the actual uh, uh, perspex and the picture to go into and the hardboard back. So what I'm going to do is set my round top here with a straight cutting bit. Uh, and I've dropped it by 8 mil, which gives me plenty of room for the uh, picture and the backing and the perspex. Um, and we're going to start cutting out now. running out of space here. Right, what I'm going to do is because this hardboard should have a nice square edge, I'm just going to line it up like so and I'm going to put these little clamps on to hold it in place while I trace it. go ahead and cut out of my jigsaw. And just for a bit of extra stability, I'm going to put a staple or a couple of staples in each corner. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm attaching a couple of these little hook things. I brought a pack of four for the blackboard that I made previously, and these are the two that are left over. I'm also going to be using this um, picture wire to hang it, which I've used for, again, my blackboard and other things that are not necessarily filmed. Um, and it's actually got a 3 kg weight limit to it, so it's actually quite strong. Just put a tiny little pilot hole. And because these are quite small screws, it's best to screw them in by hand. Me, 
OK, so that's the first frame done. Time to move on to the second one. OK, so that's one frame made. Now time to get on with the second one. Um, with this one, we've gone for a completely different approach. Um, we're not going to make it so rustic or anything like that. Uh, basically, what it's going to be is the shape of a guitar, uh, the cutout of a guitar. I'm not going to be painting it in or anything like that. I've, I've decided to make it out of um, plyboard um, and just basically spray varnish it. Because um, I've never used spray varnish before, so I thought I'd um, use some of that this time. Because a lot of people seem to use like Steve Ramsey and that. I just thought I'd give it a go and see what it was like. Um, so what I've done is I've printed out over three pages, um, see that, a uh, picture of an electric guitar. This is actually for a friend, He's, he plays electric guitar, um, so I thought he quite like this as a, as a picture frame. Um, the third piece there, uh, so that's going to be basically cut out, put together and then applied to the uh, ply board and then uh, cut out. I've also got these scraps of uh, perspex here so they're not totally square so I'm going to have to trim them down a bit so basically I'm going to it's only going to be a, a size for a fairly small photo um, but it's, it's kind of just the, the whole theme of it really it's not about having a big photo or many photos it's just the theme of having a guitar picture frame um, um, unless you make it really big unfortunately <laughs> you can't put that bigger photo in it has to be quite small because um, I printed one out and it was actually almost full size of a guitar, <laughs> so it's just a bit too big really to have as a picture frame. So what I've done is I've uh, printed off smaller, I'm going to trim one of these down and then my friend can put whatever size photo he wants into it or picture of whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out um, and then piece it all together. So what I've done is I've traced another one um, as close to the other one, um, the first one as possible, so so as to reduce as much waste as possible. Uh, and now I'm cutting that out. Um, same, same as before. Uh, do it bit by bit, and now I'm going to glue the two pieces together. Edge. I'm going to do that on all sides. And then match up the lines, and that will create the reset or the, the, the hole for the outer piece for, uh, to, to view the picture through. And then that will also create the seat for the perspex to sit on. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm just marking up a couple of uh, pieces to act as a stand. Basically, it's going to have a slight lean to it obviously so it doesn't topple over. And I'm just going to cut a couple of triangular stands uh, to put on the bottom of it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've installed my straight cutting wraps bit here with a top bearing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off freehand the uh, outer or the, the overhang of the lower part or the lower piece of plywood. <coughs> Wherever there's a rough piece, uh, afterwards I'll just sand down by hand. Done the same sort of thing again. I've got a router piece with a bearing top on it, and it's just gonna basically it's a curved one, so it's gonna create a nice curved edge.
So, like I think I said previously, I'm going to be using for this second frame um, a sprayed lacquer or varnish. Now, I went on um, Amazon and eBay um, because I've never used it before and I've seen lots of other people use it. I, I, I went on Amazon and eBay to compare prices, like as you do, um, and I found they're actually quite expensive on either. Uh, website, and no matter what ones you look at, whatever, and obviously the reviews vary. Some people say they're drippy or they're not very good finish or whatever. Um, and to be honest, they're actually quite expensive. I actually may end up getting um, this one here, it's like a yacht varnish. Um, it's only 250ml, um, but it's like nearly £6 a can, and it's that's incredibly expensive, I think. Um, and the annoying thing is. When it had already been uh, delivered, already arrived, um, and I'd already obviously paid for it, I uh, happened to go on Lidl's website um, and just check out their like the local, you know, their, their um, deals of the week, like they do. Um, you know, the centre aisle that they have, all the cool tools and stuff. Um, and it just so happens that they were selling a clear lacquer um, for two ninety nine for four hundred mils. Um, I'm not sure what it's like. It's, it's high gloss, which is really what I was after. But the fact that it's 400 mils for two, two, uh, £2.99 is just incredible, really, isn't it? And you've got this little can here. <laughs> it's a comparison, really, is it? Six quid, three quid. Crazy. But there you go. So I've decided it's at least a good thing, you know, I can compare the two, see what they're, different, they're like, different uh, makes or different types of spray lacquers. Um, this booth. Boofix, I think it's pronounced. Uh, this one from Lidl's. So I actually bought three cans of it before. If it's actually one of buy a few, you know, if you're going to have a go at it, um, and I probably, to be honest, if it's any good, and I'll wait until it comes around again, because they tend to bring things around every so often, like every few months or whatever. You can stock up on it. Um, if the yacht varnish is any good, maybe buy something in the future if I run out and I need to of this and I need to, you know, use it. But at the moment, I think I'm going to use. The uh, clear lack from Lidl's. Okay, so there we have it. Two very different frames completed. Um, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's been a bit of a different project this time. Um, oh, I now have a um, Facebook page made up. Um, it's just wood. So uh, if any of you out there want to um, post your pictures of things you've made, uh, please do. That'd be really cool. Um, and swap tips. That's what it's about. Swapping uh, information tips and 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 just general stuff about woodwork, general talk. Um, but yeah, if you could upload photos, that'd be fantastic. I'm gonna be uploading all of mine um, uh, as we go on and, and putting comments on there and, and little just bits that I've learned and whatnot. Um, so if you could all join in, that'd be fantastic, like I say. Um, and again, thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do, and or give us a thumbs up, um, that'd be good too. Um, so until next time, see you later.